Amen. Let us go to God in prayer at this time. Most mm -hmm. wise and gracious Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for another blessed day that you have allowed us to come together. Worship thee in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for this day as new, as new for the grace and mercy, Father, that you've given us. We thank you for your great love, Father, which is reminded in each of our lives. And Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, which dwells in us, which reminds us of who we are, that lets us know we have been empowered in life. Speak those things we want to have in our lives, Father. We know we are speaking spirits. We are made in your image. We thank you, Father. We thank you for Christ down on the cross for our sin, giving us an avenue of prayer. That we may approach your throne, dear Father, at any given time with assurance that you will hear and answer our prayers, not according to our will, but according to your divine will and purpose. Let us continue to seek and find our purpose in this life, dear Father. We, we all strive to make heaven our home, but during the process of time, let us be mindful we are to be about our Father's business, saving souls and keeping souls safe. Father, we thank you for your word, which is able to do for us exceeding the money above all that we ask or think, according to the power that's working in us. Father, we ask now that you be with the speaker of Brother Tiffany as we come before us this morning. Break into us a breath of life. May we continue to keep attentive to the things we have studied, prepared for us. Give us all a better understanding of God's will and God's way. Father, I ask you to bless this service that the things we do here on this day be most pleasing and acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Down at the cross where my Savior died, where he was down, where from cleansing from sin, I cried and will there to my heart, Lord, was the blood, the blood. Singing glory to His name, His precious name, and we're singing glory to glory to His name. Oh, what a precious name! Oh, what a matchless name! Glory to His name. Precious name, well, it was dead to my heart. Oh, it was the blood, the blood of a lamb, and was singing glory to his name, his precious name. focus on the value that we have with Christ living in us and us being in him. I ask that you turn your Bibles to John chapter 6 and verse number 56. Because we take this opportunity to partake of his body and we need to appreciate what that means. The Bible says, He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. In verse number 58, This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that hath eateth of this bread shall live forever. Oh, what precious blood, as we're reminded in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul says, I received of the Lord that which I have given unto you, that in the same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take ye, this is my body which is broken for you, this do in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Let us never forget the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. Because of our relationship with him, we should never die, but transition from life to life. Oh, what blood. 
let us give thanks. Our God and our Father, we come thanking you for all of your many blessings and this privilege, this opportunity you give us to be a part of the family of God. We show respect and remembrance of your sacrifice by partaking of this Lord's Supper. And we're asking for your blessing on the bread and the cup as we do this in remembrance of you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let us all say, Amen. My precious Savior suffered pain and agony. He bore it all. That I might live with him, I plead. He broke the bonds of sin and set the captives free. He bore it all. That I might live in his presence. He bore it all. Jesus bore it all. That I might see his shine. Well, he Condemned, condemned to die. But with my Jesus, I sweet my place. My place. He bore it all that I had, that I might live in His presence. Yes, he bore it all, that I might see His shine. He bore it all. I will be him mightily. I stood condemned to die. But my Jesus took my place. He bore it all that I might be in his presence. Yes, he bore it all. Jesus bore it all. That I might see his shining. Lord, you bore it all. To die. But thank God you took my place. Yes, he bore it all. all that I am in his presence. He bore it all. all that I am in his presence. He bore it all. bore it all that I might live. No greater gift had ever been given than one that would give his life on behalf of you and me. We have often heard it said, you can't be God's giving no matter how you try. That brings us to a portion of the worship service where we have an opportunity to give back to him a portion of that that he has blessed us with. And we just want to say thank you. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to give. Because it's in our giving that we have the thing that we desire. Let us give God thanks for the gift that we will receive from you and from me. That he might bless it. Our God and our Father, we come saying thank you. Thank you for your word that gives us an understanding that it's in our giving that we are blessed. We appreciate the fact that it's in our giving that you multiply our seed sown. We just thank you for both the privilege and the opportunity to give back to you. And we ask for your blessings. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Let us all say, amen. I'm going to trade my earthly home for a better one, bright and fair. Well, try to live to be fair, a man. Well, for his children in the air. Well, and I join him in that land where tears no sorrow can be. Set a wing and I receive my mansion. I want to roll, roll and cry. Lord, I want a man. Love will always 
it's all about it. Peter chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, and it reads, Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same mind, for he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lust of men, but for the will of God. I just read to you 1 Peter chapter 4, verse mm -hmm. 1 and 2, may the Lord bless the hearers and doers of his holy and divine word. Down in my soul cries holy, holy, holy. Down in my soul cries holy. And oh, down deep, 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 deep down in my soul. Down, down in my soul cries holy. One more time now, down oh, in my soul, cries holy, 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 down my soul, cries holy, and oh, down deep, deep down in my soul, down, down in my soul, cries. Holy, one more time now down in my soul, my soul cries, holy, I'm calling on you, Lord, down in my soul, my soul cries, holy, and oh, 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 oh down, down in my soul, down, down. My soul cries holy, mm, amazing grace, how sweet the sound, oh, 
that saved a wretch like me. was lost, but now I can see. Help me sing it, y'all, down, down. My soul cries, holy, 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 down. Be down in my soul, holy, oh, down. Deep, 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 deep. Down in my soul, down, down, down in my soul, Christ, holy. Mm, now, Father, I stretch my hand to thee, oh, my Lord, no, the help I know, and oh. Thou and from me, tell me now where, oh where can I go? Help me sing it, y'all now, down in my soul, my soul cries, holy, 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 down, deep down in my soul, Deep down in my soul, down, down in my soul, down, down, I'm crying holy, down, I'm crying holy, down, down, deep down, down, way down in my soul, Lord, I down, 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 deep down, down in my soul, Christ, Christ, holy, hallelujah, hallelujah, sometimes you just got to call deep down in your soul and call Jesus, he's sweeter than honey, call Jesus, oh I better stop before we get happy up in here. Sometimes you just got to call him. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. He'll hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak and forever He will reign. My God is awesome. Oh, awesome. Oh, awesome. Oh, Awesome, oh, awesome, and oh, awesome. Well, my God is awesome. Said He can move mountains. He will keep you in the valley. Said He'll hide me from the rain. Yeah, my God is awesome. Said he heals me when I'm broken. Gives me strength where I've been weak. Forever he will reign. My God is awesome. Oh, awesome. Said, oh, Yeah, 
said, I know that he's worthy. He's worthy. Said he's worthy. He's worthy. Said he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Lord, you're awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. yeah. And I know that he's mighty. He's mighty. Said he's mighty. He's mighty. Lord, you're mighty. He's mighty. Said he's mighty. He's mighty. Lord, He's my shelter. He's my shelter. Lord, you're awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my savior. He's my savior. He's my savior. He's my savior. Lord, you're awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is awesome. Said he's awesome. Said he's awesome. Lord, you're awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's my protector. My protector. My protector. My protector. Lord, you're awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. My God is awesome. He can move a mountain. He will keep you in the valley. Said, Oh, hide me from the rain. Yeah, my God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Gives me strength where I can be. And forever he will reign. Said, oh, 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 o
How many of y'all believe that he's awesome? Has he done mighty in your life? Has he healed your body? Has he protected you and been your shelter in the time of the storm? He's awesome. Somebody give him some praise this morning. Said, oh, give him all the praise. Yes, it is. God is awesome. When you think of his goodness and his grace, you can't help but praise the Lord for all that he's done and doing and will do in our life. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. He's going to help me through it today. I'm a little tired <laughs> coming back from Huntsville. But God is still good. I'm a, he's still good. He's doing great things. Can, can I put in a request? <laughs> Sing it, son. <laughs> well, and I want to move in the room with the, in the room with the Lord. Yeah, I just want to move, move in, in the room with the, the in the room. With the Lord, yeah, the yeah. The well, Lord. don't you know that I never been to heaven, but I, I've been told you know the gates are made of her tender streets like go. We're gonna move on. Well, in a room with the Lord, yeah, I just wanna move in room with the in a room with the Lord, yeah, I just wanna move in the room. In a room with the Lord, yeah, yeah. Well, don't you know that I've never been to heaven, but I've been told you know the gates are made of pearl and the streets are go. We're gonna move on.
I'll be waiting and watching. Beautiful yeah. King. Beautiful King. Yeah. Singing yes. So oh, yes, I'll be there. Well, singing yes. So oh, yes, I'll be there. Lord, I will be a dead heart. Waiting and I'm watching. Yeah. The beautiful game. And the beautiful Yes, oh yes, I'll be there, waiting and watching at the beautiful gate. Oh, I tell you, uh, all of us going to be there, but uh, some of us are not going to be watching and waiting. Amen. But uh, we know that if we are in Christ and and we are living faithful, yeah, being faithful. We have something to look forward to. Amen. This is life is not all there is to it. Yeah, we have something better. And God has prepared something better uh, for us who are in Christ on the other side. Just good to be here. Um, Good to see uh, your smiling faces and and the praise in God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And sometimes we take things for granted. Uh, amen. Uh, we, we take things for granted. We think that uh, we have earned the right to be here. No, none of us have earned the right. It is by the grace of God. Amen. It is that wonderful, amazing grace. And we want to thank uh, him and give him the glory. If God has been good to you, say amen. If he's brought you from nowhere to somewhere, I say amen again. Set your feet on solid ground, say amen again. And if you love the Lord, say amen again. If you love the Lord's church, say amen again. You love the Lord's church, turn to your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I love you. It ain't nothing funny about my love. It ought not to be anything funny about the love that we have one for the other. We ought to have a agape love that is a love that is in spite of and not because of. Amen, amen. We have a uh, reason. I know Curtis T said he was tired, but it's a good time. Yeah, I know it's a good time, you know, because they, they celebrate, yeah, the victory. You know, you know one thing about when you lose, uh, you, you show enough time. <laughs> We're driving all the way back from Huntsville, amen, uh, and uh, so it's a good time. And we have reason to celebrate uh, as well for our uh, new a uh, member, a new convert in Christ who baptized Brother Bedenfield and, and Sister Dodd had been teaching him and he's been very responsive uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ and uh, I believe his name is Keyshawn. Is it Keyshawn? Is he here? Or did he have to leave? All right, that's good. Keyshawn, that back there. Let's give him another love deposit. Welcome our new member and greet him before you leave. Let him know he's a part of the family of God. And particularly, uh, you know, uh, the, the local congregation of the uh, Moss, uh, Hanging Moss Church of Christ. Hey, praise the Lord. Amen. Y'all be able to pray. Hey, Amen. He, he's a part of the local congregation. Uh, and that is the Moss. Hey, Amen. The Moss. You know, I don't know about y'all, but I'm proud of the Moss. I'm proud to be a member of the Moss. Amen. I'm, I'm proud to preach for the moss. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I, yeah, yeah. I want to say the sisters did a, had a great program, pro, great program on, on uh, yesterday. And uh, I won't go all through the program, but uh, did an outstanding job. All the sisters, Sister Lola Wonder was a guest speaker. And they had a number. Uh, she did an outstanding job. Yeah, uh, and as well as amen, and I just love the <clears throat> the participation of uh, our young folk 
uh, that was involved, young ladies uh, that was involved, they had their part in the program as well, and we appreciate that. All our young ladies uh, uh, from the youth department had spiritual nuggets. Let's give them a love deposit. Amen. And, uh, she, she really did an outstanding job as mistress of ceremonies. It just, uh, just seemed like a natural, you know. I don't know what she got it from her mama, but uh, <laughs> but just a natural in that in that area of of, uh, of being host and mistress of ceremony. Oh, everybody did just a great job, great job, and and we want to give uh, uh, a love deposit to. Uh, Sister Bedingfield and the ladies committee for their work. Amen. And my wife for her work. You know, she uh, yeah, she spent much time. Amen. Took some of my time. I said she took some of it, but I don't allow her to take all of it. Yeah, the ladies and Sister Bedingfield try to get a amen, but uh, she know her, her time limit. <laughs> <laughs> ain't no, ain't no wee hours of the night working on no program. <laughs> but they did an outstanding job. Everybody did an outstanding job, and and they're just, they're just uh, overjoyed over our young people and the participation of all the ladies. Amen. I tell you, the ladies, the ladies, uh, they, you all have done an outstanding job. And they wondered why I was on the pro. Well, why are you on? You know, you weren't invited. I said, well, you know, I just go with scripture. I just listen to the word. And the Lord told me, watch thou in all things. <laughs> so I would just watch it. Amen, amen. Watch it, watch it. Watch it and listening. Amen. But they did an outstanding job. Everything was Real, real good, real good in the prayers and the songs and uh, and everything. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna call her a name, Allie. Allie, you know, I, I gave her name of Felicia, but I would say Allie, so y'all know who I'm talking about. Allie, I tell you, she sang, she sang that song. This, amen, amen. That made me think about it. I said, well. You know, uh, Miran is going to have to uh, get this youth, youth group together. Uh, you know, if, if, if old school is in retirement, you know, sometimes they, yeah, we got to get some, some of these vibrant, excited young voices. Amen. Now, I'm not saying y'all, y'all, choir, great choir. I want y'all to, you know, uh, but, you know, some, some of them, you know, well, anyway, not all of them, but some. We need to raise up. Yeah, young ladies and young men uh, to continue the work on and giving praise and honor to God. Is that all right? Amen. Is, uh, amen, amen. I'm just looking to see in the face. Can I recognize folk with these masks on? Oh, amen, amen. How many of y'all brought your Bibles today? Amen, amen, amen. Real good, real good. I don't know what scripture we're reading uh, was read, uh, but I assume uh, it was for. Who, who said that? Who said that? <laughs> who said that? <laughs> Put the camera on them. Oh, we don't have no camera on them. <laughs> uh, First Peter chapter four. In verse one it says, For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves. Likewise with the same mind, for he that hath suffered in the flesh hath what? Cease from sin. And we've been dealing with the topic, arm yourselves. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, it's once again that we come before your throne of grace. We come with thanksgiving in our hearts 
and praise on our lips for thou art worthy to be praised. We're thankful most of all for Jesus Christ who gave his life that we might have life. We're thankful for the church of Christ which he purchased with his own blood. We are thankful for the gospel of Christ which indeed has the power to save the whole world. And Father, we're thankful for the gift of the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us, who teaches us, who guides us, uh, shows us things to come, bring back to remembrance the things that we've studied, but also gives us the power to be victorious in life. And Father, we ask now that we will allow your word to have free course in our hearts, that we will receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. Use me, Father, as a vessel to proclaim your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. It is in Jesus' holy name that we ask it all. Let the church say, Amen, Amen, Amen. We actually, we, we had thought to conclude uh, this series and we had planned to pick back up uh, in the same chapter uh, with verse number 7 through 11, uh, which is, you'll see if you have a study Bible, it has the heading the conclusion and the benediction. Uh, but I wanted to entitle this, and we'll pick this up uh, next week uh, for you smart people who, hey man, <laughs> with the uh, subject, and it may be a couple of sermons in this, our spiritual duty in a hostile world. I want to pick back up on that because uh, on that theme, arm yourselves, uh, we talked about arming ourselves, number one, with the same, now if y'all were still here, I'm talking to the class now, arming ourselves with what? The same mind. That's the reason I don't, I, don't, I don't have a problem with the CV saying the same thing over and over again. Because we don't remember one thing from one week to the next. Amen. <laughs> uh, 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 we're going to talk about Noah. Uh, Noah preached the same sermon for 120 years. And then one neighbor say nobody but his family. <laughs> and it was, it's going to rain. It's going to rain. So we would arm ourselves with what? With the same mind or the same purpose of Christ. If you're going through something, uh, Peter was saying that arm yourself with the same mind or uh, the same purpose Christ had when he suffered. And, and that's important. And then number two, uh, we would arm ourselves. I talked about we would arm ourselves how? I'm going to go back to my first sermon <laughs> and preach it again. <laughs> Amen. On um, I say how? Number two. With the will of God or with the word of God. It's right there in the text. Y'all, If y'all hadn't read the script all these, <laughs> Amen. It, with the will of God is but to the will of God, not to the lust of men, but to the will of God. And so we arm ourselves with the will of God, with the word of God, that will enable us to deal with suffering. Amen. And you have to arm yourself. And then number three, we talked about arm yourselves how? With what? With the... Somebody was here. Somebody was here. Amen. <laughs> uh, I know the hope of eternal life. That's one of them. Uh, with the hope 
of eternal life. And then the, the, the last one was what? Arm yourselves with what? With a transformed life. I think that was before the hope. Amen. Y'all, y'all, y'all church, if I forgot, don't take notes. Y'all just looking for a shout every Sunday. <laughs> I know my student over there usually takes some good notes and, and they have the outline and everything. Right? She's kind of quiet at this moment. <laughs> Amen. Uh, and so when you when you follow the 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 context of scripture, when he finished talking about arm yourselves, he began to tell us what we our responsibility is, our duty is after or doing the suffering. Yeah, we're going to deal with that next week. Yeah, we're going to deal with that next week. But the Holy Spirit wanted me to revisit the verse number six and compare it with verse number 19. Because some of us are confused uh, about this topic of preaching. You'll see in the text, so what I'm going to do uh, in the remainder of time, I, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to uh, try to do. I'm going to talk about, and you look at these two verses, and we'll read them in a minute, the fact of preaching. I want you to see the fact, the fact that preaching was done. And then number two, I want to talk, show you the difference in the preaching. And then the end result of the preaching. Y'all got that? Y'all can put that down in your notes. And, and uh, uh, <laughs> Amen. The fact of the preaching, the difference in the preaching, as we look at these two verses, and the end result of the preaching. Now, when we read the verse, I'm going to read both of these verses, you'll find that preaching was done. Uh, in verse 6 is for this cause was the gospel preached also unto them that are dead that they might be judged according to a men in the flesh but what live according to God in the spirit and then in verse 19 uh, it says and I, I need to just go to, back to verse 18. It's for Christ also hath once suffered for us, uh, for sin, uh, in, in chapter 3, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. By which also he, this is he referring to Christ, y'all follow me? Went and preached, there that word preached again, unto the spirits in prison. And so you have preached in verse 6, and you have preached in verse 19. Christ did the preaching here in verse 19, uh, but in verse 6, you have apostles or others uh, doing or have, have done the preaching uh, in verse number 6. But I want us to see that is a difference in the preaching. Uh, we have the fact that preaching was done. But there is a difference. I'm going to go a little doctrinal on you. Uh, there is a difference in the preaching. Uh, look at verse uh, 18. Well, we know that in verse 6, 
It says, for this cause was the gospel preached. We know the gospel was preached in verse number six. And we know what the gospel is. The fact of the gospel is that Christ, uh, according to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 4, that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. These individuals who were dead at this time had already heard and preached and obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. So specifically, specifically in verse 6, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the saving gospel was preached to them when they were alive. Uh, when they were alive, when they could respond to the gospel. This is the only opportunity you're going to have to respond to the gospel. So, so I know there has to be a difference in the word preached in verse 6 and the word preached in verse number 19. Y'all see here? Uh, the preach in verse number 6 is talking about preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why Paul said in Romans chapter 1, verse number 16, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The gospel is God's saving power. And it is to be preached to, to all men, go into all the world, Jesus says, and preach what? the gospel to every creature. And then it says, he that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. Y'all see it with me? And so when we go back to 19, well, look at verse 18. Uh, it says, for Christ also hath once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, amen, you got it? That he Why might bring God us to God, God being, put to, being death put to death in the flesh, in the flesh but quickened, but quickened by, the spirit. by the spirit. And then by which also, also he, Christ, he went, went and preach, and preach unto the spirit unto the spirit in prison in, in prison okay all right let me hear you we're going we're going to combine bible class and worship together is all right uh if, if, if uh, media you're doing a good job appreciate your great job but let's give our media a love deposit uh I, I want you to get me the new american standard version uh, the New American Standard Version. And let's put that on, on the screen. The New American Standard. It's always good to, you know, compare big versions. Is it all right? And I want you to go back to verse number 18. And the New American Standard Version. I have it here for myself. But I want you to uh, notice it says, in the New American Standard Version, it says, for Christ also died for our sins. Once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us, who the us? Those who he died for. Amen. The just, you know, dying for the unjust. That, that's us. Amen. All of us. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, you know, I like that the word justification because uh, when you are now uh, as counted as just, it's just as if you never sinned. He, he died uh, for the unjust so that he might bring us 
to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. You see a difference there? You see, the reason why Peter was letting them know that Christ had died for the unjust and that he was put to death, the Bible says having put to death in the flesh was because there were those who were teaching that Christ didn't really die. They, they were teaching that because they were having a problem with God. If he's the son of God, God doesn't die. And so he must have been in a sleep or a slumber or something. Uh, uh, and, and then when they put him in the tomb, uh, he, 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 he woke up and revived himself. And, uh, and one commentary said that it was through the coolness in the tomb. That he revived and he took off the, uh, the clothes and the, no, 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 no. The fact is that Christ died. He was put to death in the flesh. And, and John gives us a good record over there in John chapter 19, where when Jesus was on the cross, amen, where he was on the cross and uh, between two thieves. And the Bible says they crucified him on the cross. And uh, the Jews wanted uh, to hasten death because uh, the next day was preparation, or uh, preparation day, rather. Uh, this was preparation day. They were preparing, you know, for the Sabbath. And so the Jews, uh, I believe, talked to Pilate over there, y'all over in John 19. And said that you know they you know in order to hasten they want to hasten the death get them off the cross, amen. Before tomorrow, amen. Because that was a Sabbath. Yes, sir. And so the Bible says they went. Uh, then came the to the first thief. You got it. Mm -hmm. Then the Jews, the Jews, therefore, yeah, huh? Because it was the preparation. Because it was the preparation that the body should not remain upon that the cross. That the body should not remain on the cross. On the cross. On the Sabbath. Day. On the Sabbath day should on remain on Sabbath day, which, which this would be Friday, right? right. And so then uh, Saturday was the Sabbath day, and then the Bible says what? For that Sabbath day, but we was in high day. I was the high day. Besought Pilate mm -hmm. that their legs might be broken. That their legs might be broken. Why did he ask? saw him to break the legs? Because breaking the legs would hasten death. You see, uh, what the, on the cross, what they could do is, you know, pull themselves up and catch some breath. And then uh, let back down. Uh, they would pull themselves up and hasten Amen. To get the breath and let themselves down. So the hasten death, am I having somebody? They would come, they would break the legs of the, of the, of the subject that's being crucified so they couldn't raise up and catch a breath. It hastened death. They broke the legs of the first thief and then they went to the other thief and broke his legs. Amen. But when it came to Jesus and saw the Bible says when it came to Jesus read, and saw that he was dead, and saw that he was dead already already they break not see John is showing proof that he was dead. Amen. Because those folk over there in Peter, Peter was dealing with, they, they, they didn't believe that he died. But John says, when they came to Jesus, he was dead already. And, and so he had to explain and to make sure, uh, make it, because they already say he was dead already. But to make sure the soldier came and pierced him. Boy, I feel like preaching this, but y'all ain't ready for that right now. Uh, the soldier came and did what? Pierced him in the side. Praise the Lord. 
and forth came out blood, blood and water. And water. Water. I'm, I'm going to get to the water in a minute. But, 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 but they made sure there was no doubt in nobody's mind. They pierced him in the side. They didn't know the spiritual significance of piercing him in the side. They were just making sure that there would be no doubt in anybody's mind that Jesus died, that Jesus was dead. And to make sure that you don't have any questions about it, that he took that spear and pierced him in the side and forth came out blood and water. Amen. Because you know, life is in the blood. And when you lose your blood, amen. I'm preaching a whole lot better than y'all looking. But, but, but that, that was the point. That was the point. And, 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 and then also the scripture said that none of his bones would be broken. And the reason why uh, they didn't break his leg, because scripture already said, prophesied, none of his bones would be broken. Sometimes folk get that confused. It didn't say his body wouldn't be broken. We had one brother. Yeah, he, he got it all uh, mixed up, you know what? And when he got at the Lord's table, he, he said, oh, I can't say they didn't break his, uh, his, his, his bones or break his body or something, he said. Uh, but uh, I, I tried to let him see. And the Bible says his bones would not be broken. Now, his body was broken. That's why we, well, that's why we take the Lord's Supper. It, how was it broken? It was broken through the, through, through the fact of the flesh was broken through the whipping and the beatings. Amen. And through the spear. Amen. But, but, but not, none of his bones was broken. Testifying to the scripture. So let's go back over there. I, I have to explain that to you because over there in First Peter where it says that uh, 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 having uh, it talks about him being dead. Uh, he was ex sharing with those who were uh, teaching or believed that he didn't die. The Bible says and being, and King James says, being put to death in the flesh. He, he was put to death. The reason why he was put to death for our sins. Amen. He died for our sins. Amen. And, and then it goes on to say that by which also he did what? That's over there. In which also he went and made proclamation. That's the difference in the preach in verse 6. The preaching in verse 6 was the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay with me now. Uh, but this preaching in verse 19 is a proclamation. It's a proclamation. The reason why I know it's a proclamation because it says to the spirits now in prison. It could not be the gospel because they were spirits. They could not obey the gospel uh, because they were spirits. And the spirits, and there's a lot of commentary on what the, who these spirits are, uh, but they, they were spirits who are now in prison. Uh, they go back to the fact that uh, these spirits had to be uh, some uh, disobedient, rebellious angels. And they got so, so out of line, uh, according to the will of God, that God put them in prison. Amen. Waiting for the judgment. <laughs> they got so evil until... He put them in, they were now in prison. It's never said of a soul being in prison. Amen. I don't believe it. If you find it, let me know. But they were in prison. Uh, because so there was a proclamation made, not the preaching of the gospel, because they could not obey the gospel. Their destiny, uh, their end was sealed. Until the judgment. Amen. It was sealed. So the question is, what was, what was the proclamation? If it wasn't 
preaching of the gospel. And I believe uh, what others believe that it was uh, proclaiming, uh, Jesus proclaiming the victory uh, over sin in his death. He made a proclamation because the demons thought they had him. Amen. The demons thought they had stopped him, but, but they were just uh, fought, they just fallen into the hands of God. Amen. His death brought about a salvation. His death brought about the victory. And so he made a proclamation to his victory on the cross of Jesus Christ. So all of us could rejoice and amen. Praise the Lord because he won the victory for us. All of us were the unjust, and he died for the unjust. The just died for the unjust. We ought to raise our hands and shout glory to God. Hallelujah, because he won the victory. Not that we're going to have the victory. We already have the victory in Jesus Christ. He won the victory. Proclamation was made. But then it goes into more of an explanation. And that's what we need to see because uh, many folk try to explain away uh, salvation uh, and explain away uh, the reason for baptism. And he goes right into, watch this, of which sometimes were disobedient when once the long suffering of God waited in what? In the days of Noah. In the days of Noah. Why the ark? Amen. Why the ark was prepared. So, you know, I taught you that when you're studying the Bible, you have to do an interrogation of the text. Uh, you have to, in, in doing an interrogation of the text, you, you, you answer the five W's. Who is speaking? To whom? What they're talking about? Why they saying what he's saying, and give a time frame of when. So we got we know who talking. A amen. That's Jesus, and, and what is he saying? He's giving a proclamation. <laughs> amen. <laughs> and and then why is he saying what he's saying? Because he just won the victory, and he's letting these uh, these demons, these spirits, know that he has won the when it was when. Uh, uh, which sometimes were disobedient when once uh, the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah. I want you to go. It gives us when, when, when during the days of Noah. Amen. Uh, look at it in the New American Standard. I, wanna, I want you to see that because we're going to talk a little bit about baptism. I'm going to let you go. Is that all right? Listen to what the Bible says. Who once were disobedient when the patience of God kept waiting in the days of Noah. God is a patient God. Oh, aren't you experiencing that God is a patient God? He is patient with us. Not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. He's a patient God. He allows us uh, to come in as babes in Christ, but he wants us to grow, so he's patient. You may be dealing with some stuff right now, but he's patient. You, you may not have overcome, but he's patient. You may be weak in some areas and, and seem like you're falling down, but thank God, he's patient. Uh, that reminds me of, uh, uh, you know, uh, little babies, you know, uh, go back to uh, Elijah, you know, uh, uh, you have to have patience with babies. They may not have patience, but uh, you have to have patience. Amen. Elijah has, you know, you know, kids, uh, babies develop personalities early. And uh, uh, Elijah's personality is that he, he don't have a lot of patience. And what do you mean by preacher? What I mean by that is that when he wants his milk, he wants it now. He don't want you to get ready. He wants you to be ready. And he'll give you one of those looks. Like, what's wrong with you? 
I'm hungry. It's time for me. And Bunny has timed it about every three hours. When he wake up, he's waiting for the bottle. Where is he? And we kept him uh, uh, last weekend. We, we keep him at the house. And uh, 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 Lisa found out uh, uh, what, he, what he meant, the, the lack of patience. And she hadn't had the bottle ready. And boy, he let out a fuss that you wouldn't believe. <laughs> he let out a fuss. What's wrong with you? I've had my nap. And now no bottle, and you getting ready? You not ready? He just started, uh, I mean, he started wailing. And as soon as he got the bottle and gave it to him, quiet it down. But thank God he has, God has patience with us. Yeah, you may be dealing with some stuff in your life right now, but keep on working on it. Keep on, amen, amen, uh, being faithful. Keep on working. You got to do some work. Keep on resisting. Keep on, I mean, you, you're going to find out that you're going to fail less and less. You're going to sin less and less. Y'all see it here? But God is a patient God. Look at that. Let me try to go on to this conclusion right quick. Listen to what the Bible says. uh, uh uh, he is patient with us. Watch this. He's patient. And the patience of God, he kept waiting in the days of Noah. Kept waiting. I like that word, kept waiting. King James said, uh, he just kept waiting. Kept waiting. Kept waiting, hoping somebody would listen. Kept waiting. Hoping somebody would uh, uh, obey. Kept waiting. And he waited. Uh, for 120 years. 120, that's a long time. That, that, that's, uh, uh, ain't too many folk going to live 120 years. Yeah. Longer than, I don't know if anybody ever lived, you know. But the Bible said he kept waiting. This is folk who haven't obeyed the gospel of Christ. He's still waiting. He's still waiting. He's still waiting, giving time and time. He gave these folk 120 years, but he, you know, kept waiting. But we have to realize the waiting going to be over. He kept waiting for them. And I don't know how long God's been waiting for you to respond to the gospel, to be baptized in the Christ. But, but he has patience. He's still waiting. As he was in the days of Noah. And during the construction of the ark, the Bible says, in which? Watch this, in which? There is just a few. During the construction of art in which a few that is eight souls were brought safely through the water. King James says, where in few that is eight souls were saved by water. Only eight folk. Sometimes, you know, I think about all these millions and billions even of folk in the world. I know it had to be a whole lot of folk back then because prior to this, there was a whole lot of begetting. You just be, be getting, be getting, and be getting. So it was a lot of folk because of a whole lot of be getting going on. <laughs> but only eight souls were saved. Eight individuals. And guess what? There was only one family. And all the ones in that one family, out of all the families that lived during that time, only one family was saved 
and that family were all Noah's. All Noah's. One family. Sometimes, I, I, I don't know about you, I get caught up in all these millions and billions of folk that's in the world today. God, this scripture just says, God ain't so much concerned about numbers as he's concerned about obedience. He's concerned about obedience. These eight souls, they were saved by water. They were saved by water, James says. They were saved by water. I thought you said there was uh, the ark, prepared the ark, went on, but the Bible said they were saved by water. And then it goes on to say, watch this, uh, saved by water. Y'all remind me to take the time. I'm going to close. I got to close out with baptism. When sometimes we're disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the uh, days of Noah, while the heart was preparing, where in few, that is, eight souls were saved by water. And then it goes in the next verse. What, what, watch what it says in the next verse. The it says, figure. The light figure, where just you? like they were saved by water, here's the light figure. For us today, the light figure, just like they were saved by water, the light figure was, watch this, even baptism doth also win. Now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but an answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says that the light figure, just like they were saved by water. We are saved by baptism. I, I, I can't, it can't get no more plainer than that. But you know what, what many of these uh, scholars or commentary, they try to explain away baptism. They, they try to explain it away, and, and in trying to explain it away, they 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 in direct contradiction to what the Bible says. I know some of y'all heard this, but I, 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 we need to go over this. We got a lot of folks listening on live screen, don't understand by baptism. Uh, this one commentary says certain theological traditions misinterpret Peter's statement, baptism now saves you. You hear what he said? He says, certain theological traditions misinterpret Peter's statement, baptism now saves you. How can you misinterpret a plain statement? How can you misinterpret a statement, a plain say, statement that he said, uh, baptism now saves us? That, but that's what he said. He says that to refer to spiritual salvation by water baptism, uh, baptism regeneration, but baptism, uh, and he's correcting this, from baptizo simply means to emerge. Now, that's right. It means to emerge. But uh, he says, uh, uh, simply means to emerge and not just in water. Yeah, not just in water, but you can't eliminate water. <laughs> and then watch, watch what it says. Uh, 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 boy, this is good. He says, uh, Peter here is using baptism to refer to a, uh, a figurative immersion into Christ as the ark of safety that will sail over the holocaust of judgment on the weak. Oh, that's some, that's some beautiful philosophy. And then he goes on to say, I'm going to try to, I'm trying to uh, hasten up on this. He says, Peter made clear that he did not want readers to think he was referring to water baptism. 
when he specifically said not the removal of the dirt from the flesh. Now, why are you? <laughs> he wasn't right with, when he said that, he was saying, let us know that the purpose of baptism is not for bad. No, it's not for taking a bath. Yeah, we know the purpose of baptism. It's not for taking a bath. You take your bath at home. Praise the Lord. Because if it was for a bath, we would have some soap. We would have a brush to scrub you down. <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, watch this. He said... <laughs> <laughs> he says, uh, and then he says, this, this is, this is going to cap it all. And I'm going to conclude. He says, an appeal to God for, he says, baptism now saved was also a clear for the phrase, an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And listen what he says. Now, these, these are scholars now. He says, the only baptism, the only baptism, the only baptism that, that saves, let me get that because I got it highlighted. He said, the only baptism that saves folk, that saves people, is dry. He says, the only baptism that saves folk is, a, is, is dry. The spiritual one into the death as well as the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says a dry, and then he quotes Romans 10, 9, and 10. Well, most of them quote. But he want to eliminate baptism. And let, me, let me, and let me read another commentary for you, and then we're going to close and show you that there's baptism water is in the plan. It's going in direct contradiction to what Jesus said. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Over there in Acts chapter 2, when Peter was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and asked the men and brethren, what shall we do? I'm so glad is he said, what shall we do? Not what shall we get or not what shall we feel, but what shall we do? And Peter told them what to do. Watch this. Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise of you and your children and all those that will fall, even as many as our God shall call with many other words did he testify and exhort them saying save yourselves from this untoward generation and they that gladly received the word were baptized the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls you can't get no more clearer than that amen that's what shall we do Peter told them to repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for what purpose? For the remission of sins, not for a bad, for the remission of sins, not for a good, for the remission of sins. And it'll give you a good conscience, Lord God. Y'all see it here? But uh, I gave, uh, uh, I don't know what version, that, that's King James Version, but it's commentary in there. Now you have to be careful with these Bible and with the commentary down. Now some of it is good, but you have to be careful because if you look in the beginning of, in, in front of your Bible, you'll see all the contributors in front of your Bible to this commentary. <laughs> Amen. But listen to what this, this commentary said about Acts 2 and verse 38. What did it say? Repent means to change one's mind. He said, repent means to change one's mind. Then the next point goes in baptism. says, for several reasons. For several reasons. Be baptized. Be baptized. Should not. Should not. Be joined. Be joined. With for the remission of sins. Now, now, now who are you? To say should not be joined. 
when Peter, who was an apostle of Jesus Christ, joined them together. He says, repent and that and join <laughs> baptism with repentance or repentance with baptism. Now, who are you to say it should not be joined? Who are you going to believe? Now, here are the reasons why he says that. Go ahead and read. For several reasons, be baptized should not be joined. Should not be joined? With for the remission of sins. Huh? What? To, to teach. Baptism. What? Should not be joined? For the remission of sins. Should not be joined? For the remission, remission of sins. Of several sins. reasons it should not be joined. For the remission of sins. Now, who are you to say? It should not be joined. Baptism is for the remission of sin. Read. To, Go ahead. to teach baptism. To teach baptism. Regeneration. Regeneration. Go ahead. First, the context. First, the context. Of this passage. Of this passage. Demonstrates. Demonstrate. That only the repentance. The only what? The repentance. The only the repentance. Is connected. Is connected. With the removal of sin. Lord have mercy. Can you salvation. read? <laughs> <laughs> repentance <laughs> only repentance is connected is connected with the now, now of I want you to read, 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 read that verse again sometimes we need to have doctrine of preaching right. amen so we can help other folk understand just cause you a good person you have, you're not a child of God praise the Lord and, and just because you, you, you think you're living right and, and cause you're religious doesn't make you a child of God Amen. We got to believe that. We got to believe the Bible for ourselves. Listen to what he, Peter said in Acts 2 38 again. I'm going to close. Then Peter said unto them. I think I have my third one. Uh, the sister, she counts. She did that third. I got five. Well, go ahead. <laughs> then Peter said unto them. And then Peter said unto them. Repent. Repent. And be baptized. And be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the repent and be baptized. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the thought of Christ. For the, for the remission, the of, remission sins. of your sins. And repentance and baptism is, is joined for the remission of sins. Amen. You shall receive. I'm going to do a series. I might do it down in, what's the name? You can't believe everything you hear. And this is a good time to preach it. Because <laughs> folks folk, folk, uh, believe in stuff. Hook, line, and single. <laughs> it ain't but a Well, anyway. <laughs> but knows how it's John. But he says it's not John. Finish reading that. First, the context of this passage demonstrates uh, that only the repentance is connected with the removal of sin. With the removal of sin. At salvation. And salvation. Well, watch this. Whosoever shall call. Whosoever call. Going to Romans be, 10, 9 shall, and 10. Shall be saved. Shall be saved. Peter's next recorded sermon yeah. states only repent. Uh -huh. That your sins may be blotted out. Uh -huh. Second, <laughs> throughout Acts, men demonstrate their faith and salvation prior to baptism. Yeah. Third, the, uh -huh. sot the soteriological. They, passage, they demonstrated what? Second, throughout throughout Acts, men demonstrate mm -hmm. their faith and salvation mm -hmm. prior to baptism. Whoa. They did. <laughs> prior to baptism. They did? Prior to baptism? Amen. They demonstrated repentance. Yeah. Yeah. Prior to baptism. But not salvation. Because Jesus put salvation as a baptism. Did he give another third reason? Th third, uh -huh. the soteriological passages through the New Testament do not include water baptism in the salvation experience. He says it's soteriological. 
Soteriological, big word there. Yeah. <laughs> Says what? Passages throughout the New Testament do not include water baptism Ooh. in the salvation experience. Does not include salvation. I'm going to take you to the words of Jesus. What Jesus said, go preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye. He that believe it and is and is baptized shall be shall be saved. Yes, sir. He put salvation after baptism. And I will go even further. When he told him that was a great commission. To go in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believe it and is baptized shall be saved. And they followed that great commission in the book of Acts. Where they went into all the world. He told me, you shall be witness unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, uh, Samaria, and the most parts of the world. They went all into the world preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Acts 2, you find where Peter preached the gospel and salvation received after baptism. You go out through the book of Acts and every example of conversion, you will find that they, salvation will receive after baptism. I'm just going to deal with one, but every example that you read in the book of Acts, which we call the Acts of the Apostles, we find uh, the conversion examples of how people were converted. They first heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. They believed it and they repented of their sins, confessed Christ to be the Son of God and the last step was baptism. I want you to go to Acts chapter 8. I'm trying to close this thing in Acts chapter 8 where we have the Ethiopian uh, eunuch who had been to worship and he was on his way back home and there was Philip, a gospel preacher, amen, sent by the Holy Spirit and and said to oh, join yourself oh, to this man who was on a chariot. Amen. And he was reading the scriptures. Amen. The Bible said he was reading the scripture. And remember, I think you're at the place where Philip uh, uh, began at the same scripture where he was reading. Watch what it says. Go ahead and read. Watch this. The Bible says what? The place of the scripture. And the place of the scripture. Which he read. Which he read. That was what? Was this. Was this. He was led as, he was a, led as a sheep to the slaughter. To the slaughter. And like a lamb. A lamb. Dumb before dumb his shield. Before his shield. Was talking about Jesus Christ read. So and, open and so he opened not his mouth read. In his humiliation. In humiliation his judgment, his judgment was, taken away. was taken away read. And who shall declare, who shall declare his generation? Uh, then the generation and read. Life. And the Bible says what? For his life. For his life. Is taken and half of him read talking about Jesus. Uh -huh. And the Bible says what? And the eunuch answered. And the eunuch answered. Philip who, and said, Who you're talking about? What what is scripture? Who is he referring to? And the Bible says, then What Philip did Philip do? Opened Philip his mouth opened his mouth and began, and began at the same scripture. And what did he do? He preached, preached unto, unto him, him Jesus. Jesus. He told him how Jesus went to the cross of Calvary. How Jesus. Uh, shed his blood. How Jesus was buried in Joseph's new tomb. How Jesus got up on the third day morning. How Jesus declared that all power in heaven and earth had been given unto him. He preached unto him Jesus. But when he preached Jesus, watch this. The Bible says what? And as they went, as on, they their went way, on their way, they came, they came unto a certain water. To a certain what? And the eunuch said. They came to what? A certain water. A certain water. Amen. Uh, he came to a certain water because he preached to him Jesus. Uh, amen. That's what the Bible says. He preached to him Jesus. And then the unit says, See, here is water. What does it hinder me to be, be baptized. baptized? You see, the point is, see, I'm preaching like I'm in a gospel meeting. Uh, he said, uh, the Bible said he preached unto him Jesus. But then the man, uh, you know, he said, see, here's water. What did hinder me to be baptized? I thought you said he preached to him, Jesus. 
What did Amen. But the unit said, what did hinder me to be baptized? That's simply saying that when you preach Jesus, you're preaching the man. But you also have to preach the plan. And the plan is in water baptism. He says, see, here's water. Ain't no such thing as a dry baptism. Praise the Lord. Amen. When it comes to the Great Commission, he says, see, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? And watch the Bible says, continue reading. And, and Philip the Bible says, says, and Philip said, if thou believe, if thou it, believe it with, all, thy with heart, all your heart, thou mayest. Thou mayest. Is. You may what? Be baptized if you believe. So it requires faith. And then what happened? And he answered and he said, answered and said Here's believe. the confession. I believe that Jesus Christ he is. is the Son of God. And the Bible says, What? And he commanded, and he commanded the chariot. Boy, he said, Stop the chariot. Stop the chariot. I've already confessed that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Now it's time to stop the chariot because the next step is baptism. So the Bible says, watch this. The Bible says what? And they, they both and they what? Went down. They both, both. They, they both went down into, into the, the water. water. That's why you gotta have enough water. Amen. For both to go down into. You can't have no bowl of water. Or amen. To baptize somebody. The baptism is not a sprinkling. It's not a pouring but it's going down into the water, immersion in the water. And the Bible says what? They went down. Both and they both went down into the water. Into the water. Both and what? Up. Both Philip and the, and the eunuch. And, and the Bible the says they and both he, went down in the water. Philip and the eunuch. And the Bible says what? And he baptized, and he them. baptized him. What did he do? He dipped him in the water. What did he do? He emerged him in the water. What did he do? He covered him in the water. Amen. And when he came up, watch this, the Bible says, and when and they, when they come, up, come up out, out of the water, the of the amen, Lord. amen, come up out of the water, amen. What happened? The Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, caught away Philip, caught away uh, Philip, that the eunuch, and the eunuch, saw him no more, saw him no more, and he went, and the eunuch, what? Went on his way, went on his way, rejoicing. don't go on your way rejoicing. Until you come up out of the water. You got something to rejoice about. Stand on your feet when you come out of the water. You got something to rejoice about. What you got to rejoice about, Peter? I got all my sins washed away. What have you got to rejoice about? I am now in Christ as a child of God. What else? Yes, you got to rejoice about. I am a member of the church of Christ on my way to heaven. Amen. I, I can rejoice now because I've done what the Lord told me to do and if you're in Christ amen you've heard the gospel you believed it repented of your sins confessed Christ to be the son of God and you have been baptized in water for the remission of your sin. You got something to rejoice about because you are a child of God. You are a member of the church of Christ. Amen. I wish I had time to explain a little bit more about when he pierced him in the side. Forth came out blood in the water. You see, that symbolizes what happened uh, in, the, in the book of Genesis. You see, the wife uh, of, no, uh, of, of Adam came from the side of Adam and took a, a real uh, amen from his side and he formed Eve but the same way spiritually with Christ Christ amen bought the church it came from his side because he cut him when he pierced him in the side came out forth blood and water he took the blood and he purchased the church of Christ that's why you got something to rejoice about because he has purchased the church with his own blood and I'm a member of the body of Christ some of y'all missing your shout I'm on my way to heaven because the Bible says I wish I had time to conclude on, on that verse where he's now on the right hand of God you can rejoice about it because you got an inner 
intercession. You got God's right hand man on your side. So he's making intercession. When I get weak, he's making intercession. When I make a mistake, he's making intercession. When I trip up, He's making his intercession. When I get, take a wrong turn, he's making his intercession because the Bible says he forever live it. I'm through to make intercession for us. Difference in the preaching. Difference in the preaching. One is preaching the gospel. The other is just a proclamation of victory. Are you here today? And are you willing to respond to the right kind of preaching? It's the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You hear the folks saying all kind of stuff. They preach some pretty sermon, good sermon. But they, at the end of it, they, they said, say this prayer. Say this sinner's prayer. And after that prayer, they say, you've been saved. I believe. One said, yeah, I believe you've been born again. Based on, and they quote Romans 10, 9, and 10. Amen. But if you, if you follow that passage all the way through, just don't stop at that one verse, you'll see that ba baptism is involved and preaching of the gospel is involved. It's a continuation, not just that alone. God doesn't save us by nothing alone. Amen. And so it's your opportunity to come. If you're struggling, you're suffering with something, just know that we have Jesus making intercession for us. Sometimes you can get so burdened down, but he's making intercession for you. God bless you, young man that's come. Amen. And maybe some others are willing to come and give your life to Christ. You may not have it all together, and really we will never get it all together. We'll never. That's why Jesus paid the price. Because it's not my righteousness. It's his righteousness by which we'll say. We're going to sing the song of invitation. This young man has come. I want you to get a card, get, a, get the information from him uh, as to what he want us to do for him. Uh, and we're just thankful. There may be some others who are willing to come. Young man, um, it's Keyshawn. He responded after having several Bible classes. He, he surrendered his life to Christ. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Jesus said, whosoever will, let him come. Well, I'm on my way to heaven and I'm so glad I am on my, on my way, way to, to heaven, heaven and I'm so glad. glad. And I'm on my, my way, way to heaven, heaven and I'm so glad that the world can't do me no harm. Can't sing that song if you don't know you're on the way to heaven. Oh, on my way to heaven, and I'm so glad I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm so glad that the world can't do me no harm. Well, I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm so glad I'm on my way to heaven, and I'm so glad that the world can't do me no harm. So glad on my way, on my way to, to heaven, heaven and I'm so glad the world can't do me no harm, do me no harm. Well, Jesus is my Savior and I'm so glad, oh, Jesus is my Savior and I'm so Savior, and I'm so glad the world 
Can't do better No harm I'm on my way On my way to hell How many of y'all just know you're on your way to hell? So glad On my way to heaven And I'm so So glad On my way to heaven And I'm so glad So Is my savior, and I'm and so so glad. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, Jesus is, is my savior, and I'm so so glad. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus is, is my savior, and I'm so so glad. glad. The world, the world can't do me and no harm. And I'm so, so glad yeah, oh, I'm on my way, way to heaven And, and I'm, I'm so, so glad I'm on, on my way to heaven, heaven and, and I'm so, so glad well, The world, world can't, can't do me no Praise God, praise the God in the house. Let the church say amen. Let's give the man of God a love deposit for another outstanding, outstanding message on this morning. The message has pricked the heart of Charles Jennings, and he comes and he wants to be baptized. I'll just, just let you all know, got a call from his, his daughter. It's your daughter, right? Right. And she said, Daddy is having some anxiety and he needs to be connected to a church and so forth. So we uh, we got with him. Brother Kermit Smith has been studying with him. Uh, so he knows the truth. And he's been here for the last few weeks. Heard the gospel preach. And he wants to put Christ on in baptism. Yeah. So I told him, Brother Pittman, we'll take your confession. And he said, uh, he said, well, well can, I, can I be baptized uh, Right now, I said, every example that we read about in the scripture, when a person was ready, we did it the Amen. same day. Amen. So we're going to ask Brother Pippen, if he will, to take yes. Charles Jennings is his name. Charles Jennings. Charles, Charles yes. I've been noticing you, and I know that Brother Kermit has been working with you, but I've noticed your attentiveness uh, in the lessons and your involvement even in the praise. And uh, this is a fitting, uh, not necessarily a conclusion, but it's a conclusion in your obedience yeah. uh, to Christ, but you, you're going to continue to do that. Praise God. You're going to continue to be uh, involved in the Word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Charles, we want to ask you a question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Yes, uh, this confession brought death unto him that he completely obedience in the water of the grave of baptism. Yeah. All your sins will be washed away. Amen. You will be a new creature in Christ. Now you're going to look the same in the mirror, but you're going to be not the same inside. Amen. 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 There ain't no change of opinion. Right. But, but you're going to be changed on the inside. Amen. Let me get down in the past. Thank you. Amen. All right. We'll ask a couple of brothers to take him next door and we'll get him prepared for baptism. It's that simple, isn't it? Everything about the gospel is simple. Let's give him a love deposit once again. Uh, I, just before you get to, uh, finish those announcements, I want to um, uh, inform the congregation, announce to the congregation, and thank the congregation for your generous giving in all of our uh, particular offerings and funds uh, that we have, and one is in particular is the mission fund that you've been giving, and uh, for the purpose of our mission that we are involved in. And in Lexington, we had a meeting with the brethren on last Sunday evening uh, after service, rather, and uh, we informed of where we were in our uh, opening or reopening of the Lexington Church. Lexington Church has been uh, closed for over two years. 
and uh, you had to grow on your weeds and everything. But um, uh, we have, uh, through uh, our buildings and grounds, Brother Jefferson and Brother uh, Bruce, yeah. who are managers of that project, have uh, we gotten it to a point where there are a few things left to be done. And we are looking to, we will give you a, a slide presentation uh, before we do our opening day. But I want to just thank you for that. God is uh, fulfilling his promises yep. and he's uh, making us, it's been my vision from the very beginning that we be an Antioch, a Jerusalem church where we will be responsible for helping all the church, young, smaller churches and reviving churches, establishing churches in the area in which we live. We, we are supporting uh, missions abroad as well, uh, supporting their admission in Meridian. Uh, and I, I want to thank you again for your monetary support because we were, were not able to do these things had not be for uh, the generous giving of this congregation. And we've already spent about $80,000 in getting the building back in shape. Uh, and uh, we look to have our grand opening in uh, Lexington, Mississippi. So it's not in the bullet this time, but we're gonna ask that you, we're gonna give a list of, 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 of goods, uh, non-perishable items uh, that you to bring and donate. So that we're gonna give out food uh, boxes uh, uh, on, our, on that Saturday prior to. And so we wanna, we've talked to different other uh, people and they, they said that they, you know, it had to be a disaster. Uh, and it, it, it was a spiritual disaster up there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it was a spiritual disaster. Yeah. And so uh, uh, we asked the congregation, would you, and the list will be on our site by next week. And if it's not on there already. You know, some items that you, you to bring and be generous in your bring. Uh, uh, we want to be here. So, you know, folk, you know, they love giveaways. Yeah. And so that way we can get some folk registered and we can teach Bible class. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. It's all good. Appreciate that, Pitt. Uh, one other uh, word I want to share with you. It says, I want to thank the church for the prayers for my mother. She's doing well at my niece's home. Uh, she had the fluid on her heart and she's doing well. This comes from uh, George Berry. Sister Berry, she's doing, doing well. Let's give, give a love deposit for God coming through once again. All right, just real quick, I want to take this quick second to recognize uh, our visitors at this time. Again, we're glad you took time to be with us in our services on this morning. So as I call your name, just raise your hand so that we can give you a warm uh, hanging moss welcome. First we have, uh, this is Zanna and Jeremy Tribble. Zanna and Jeremy Tribble of West Jackson. There, there they are in the back. Give them a little deposit. Glad to have you with us on our services this morning. Next we have Brianna. Uh, Brown and family of Jackson, Brianna Brown and family. There they are. They're raising their hands in the back. Next, we have Patty Jasper from Cincinnati, Ohio. Patty Jasper. Where are you, Patty? All right. Member of the church. Good to have you in our midst. Uh, next, we have Sister Regina Braden of Watkins Road Church of Christ, Columbus, Ohio. That folk from Ohio this morning. You all come back and be with us again at every opportunity that you can. We're certainly glad to have you with us on our services on this morning. All right, any additional announcements before we give the benediction? All right, let's give the benediction at this time. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may abound in hope. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you.